cops. The cops are told to stand down. And then a couple days later, they attack the peaceful crowds. People said, well, they had it coming. And then people are scared to go out and demonstrate because there's always these anarchists there who we've proven are government operatives. This is on record. These are rent mobs funded by the big foundations. Again, let's continue. Got it. Andy Stern, SEIU president, leading White House visitor. Workers of the world unite. It's not just a slogan anymore. Give me some of these. Give me some of these pictures. Let me ask you this question. Do you, are, you, are you like any of these people? Are you like William Ayers? We don't regret setting off any bombs. And these pause again. Like you. Back it up a few seconds. See, and, and like a child, are you like these people? No, you don't want to be like this guy setting off bombs. And then he connects it to 9-11 truth here in a moment. See, the message is you're a terrorist. And then he has this left-right paradigm on the chalkboard, the left over here, the right over here. He says America is right of center. No, in that false paradigm, we're way liberals don't. The grassroots are now pro-Second Amendment. Grassroots, the numbers have shifted. They're anti-abortion. Grassroots, uh, so-called mainline liberals don't like the big banks under Bush or under Obama. So he always says it's about getting outside the left-right paradigm using my term, I coined, but then every time he shows a graphic, it's a left-right paradigm. And then he puts all these radicals over on the side of Obama's administration. Most of them are out there on the fringes, foundation-funded. He doesn't mention all the big Israeli operatives and British operatives and globalist operatives that are in the White House who say arrest anyone who has these views. No. He gives you the left-right paradigm. Here it is. Question. Do you, are, you, are you like any of these people? Are you like William Ayers? We don't regret setting off any bombs. Are these people like you? Are they like our founders? We're normally in the center. We're actually a country that is center-right. Okay? We don't like the extreme right. We don't like the extreme left. We're about here. Good pause. Okay? Are you like the terrorist or are you like our founders? Well, wait a minute. Our founders talked about government staging fake crises. Our founders said don't get involved in foreign entanglements. Don't let foreign governments come in and take your government over. We've had global corporations come in that are bigger than most governments and take over. Our founders, uh, Glenn, would have supported Ron Paul, not you, who were for the banker takeover bailout. That you go on to blame on the communist. And certainly they're part of it and they want things to collapse. But so do the Republicans, and they all worked in tandem, seamless integration between Clinton, Bush, Obama. But, oh, no, the Republicans are going to save you. Again, back to his fake left-right paradigm. Where would, where would I put a guy who bombed the Pentagon? Here? Who doesn't regret and says he didn't do enough? How about Andy Stern? Workers of the world unite. Is he here? He's on the extreme left. Ron Bloom, this is a guy who said, we kind of agree with Chairman Mao that political power largely comes from the barrel of a gun. Do you believe that? I don't largely believe it. I don't kind of believe it. I don't believe it. I think he's over here. Anita Dunn, one of her favorite political philosophers, is Mao. And How about the guy? Yes, and one of David Rockefeller... One of his, and, and, and he's on record helping fund uh, News Corps and Clear Channel, on record, uh, so he can control the opposition. The best way to control is to lead it. He wrote in 1976, he wrote multiple editorials, but one in 76, praising Mao as one of his favorite philosophers. Called him a philosopher. Our government kicked Chiang Kai-shek out. That's now been declassified. Our government helped put Lenin in. And then when Stalin got out of control, he was certainly really bad, and kicked out the Trotskyites. They came over here, and William Crystal's father founded the neoconservative movement that you work for. I mean, you want to talk about communists in the White House. Bush had a lot more, but they're not communists. They use that as a banner to take over societies. Let's continue. Who, now, these are just people. These people are in and around the White House. This guy isn't. But this is where Obama launched his campaign at this man's house for 20 years. He sat in this man's church. This man says the government gives people drugs and then wants us to sing God bless America. No, no, no. Good pause. You know the rest of that.
The government gives us drugs. See, and they also have the controlled left, like Reverend Wright, come out and say the government created HIV. That's declassified, but never give any evidence. And the government ships the drugs in. Well, I mean, they had a congressional hearings, and the CIA inspector general in 1996 admitted they ship in the majority of the narcotics. Oh, but see now, if you don't trust the government, and you know the government shipping drugs in, as Ron Paul exposed in that speech a month ago, and Ron Paul said we've had a CIA coup, and they're shipping the drugs in, oh, you're with Reverend Wright. See, I'm not a left-winger or a right-winger. If something's the truth, I talk about it. And I talk about how big government's the tool of control, whether it's from the fake right, uh, right or the fake left. But see, Glenn Beck makes it all a left-wing thing to think the government deals drugs or the government's engaged in population reduction so that the right wing watching this won't fully wake up. And the left in Newsweek and Time comes out and attacks the right wing and says, oh, look, it's a right wing thing to believe the U.N. wants to reduce your numbers and to believe the government's dealing drugs. See, when Bush is in office, it's a left-wing thing to talk about FEMA camps. When Obama is in office, it's a right-wing thing. No, it's the truth. But as long as they can divide you into two groups to fight, they win. And everything Beck does is that. So he knows you're waking up to this, so he comes in and says, I'm against the left-right paradigm. Now, here's a graphic of the left-right paradigm. Continue. He says it's in the Bible. That's what happens to countries for killing innocent people. So he's surrounded. Oh, wait a minute. Radicals. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Reverend Wright says that the Arabs attacked us because we were oppressing them. That's what the big foundation funded uh, Ward Churchill says. See, 9-11 Truth never said that. We know it was staged. We know radical Muslims are funded to overthrow mainline regimes in the Middle East and Central Asia. See? See? Most of these people he puts up here prop up, like Noam Chomsky and Howard Zinn, the official line that 9-11 was not an inside job. The left, the control left, has been the biggest attacker of 9-11 truth. It's all fraud. When you know the truth, everything Lynn Beck says is a twisted distortion, a spin, or an outright lie. Continue with this liar surrounded by radicals here's why the republic is in danger and the president is in danger first then the republic back it up hit pause back it up 10 seconds here's why the republic's in danger not that big offshore banks that openly want worldwide eugenics and world government are in control not that they've stolen 28 plus trillion and counting in the last year and a half not that it's bipartisan not that goldman sachs and jp morgan chase own both parties not that Northcom is setting up all these FEMA camps. Not that they're launching all these wars based on lies. Not that troops are suddenly running checkpoints all over the country with any excuse they get. No, the republic is in danger. He now brings you to the ultimate enemy. You don't like communists. You don't like these socialists. You don't like people that bomb the Pentagon. Who all prop up the official 9-11 story. Guilt by association. Now he brings in Van Jones. The only one they kicked out because broken clocks are right twice a day and blind hogs do occasionally find acorns because now he can make it a left-wing issue for 9-11 truth when the truth is it was the libertarians and true constitutionalists that exposed 9-11 from day one you're looking at the founder of the 9-11 truth movement i'm the guy that had the nerve to tell the truth before it happened and after it happened i understood how important it was to take false flag terror away from these people and we've used this radio show as a platform for all the real leaders against the New World Order to build them up to where you now see them as pundits on international television, like Webster Tarpley, from obscurity to being well-known. Continue with Glenn Beck, because here he comes in with the danger to the republic. It's not the big banks. It's not the New World Order. It's a few leftists they had in the White House for left cover to pacify the left. Here it is. In the Bible, that's what happens to countries for killing innocent people. So he's surrounded by radicals. Surrounded by radicals. Here's why the republic is in danger. And the president is in danger first. Then the republic. Here's this tree of revolution we talked to you about. Cloward and Piven. These were the Marxist students. These were people like this guy. SDS. Okay? 
right here is when they think, yeah, Che, that's the way to go. They want a real revolution. Guns, blood in the street, SDS. Cloward and Piven come along and they say, no, 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 wait a minute. We can just infiltrate and collapse the system. We can overwhelm it. Those people say, yes, Wade Rathke, Dale Rathke, SCIU, ACORN, they move over in this direction. They say, yes, we'll do it peacefully. And we'll pause. do it peacefully. And pause. So they're going to do it peacefully. So now it's ACORN that collapsed things. It's not the big banks. Glenn Beck's for the banker bailout. It's ACORN.